says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler. I'm gonna make this personal. And from the perilous pestilence, that's a disease. That's something that's hit the land, be it anthrax, be it some kind of stinking flu. Man, I, there's all kinds. Of, there's a swine flu, there's a bird flu, there's a monkey flu, there's a kangaroo flu. I mean, there's all kinds of flus that have hit in, in the H1N1 and they got all these mutated fluenzas. It's, it's not just a flu that you used to get, your nose gets stuff and you get a little cough and you get over it. Y'all know if you've had it, it clings to you. And you gotta fight that thing, man. You gotta come against it. Ain't nothing wrong with taking antibiotics and taking things to help you, but you need some prayer on it too, boy. Somebody say amen. It will get on you and it's, sometimes it's hard to shake. There's really something in this scriptures, in Psalms 91. He will deliver us from the snare of the fowler. That's somebody that catches birds with a snare, y'all. They set these little things for these birds. They also make deadfalls. They'll pull a rock up and put a stick under it with a little trigger on it, and when the bird goes under there to get its food, it'll smash it. Those are fowlers. That's how you catch birds. He said he'd deliver us from that. And from the perilous pestilence, He'll cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. Years ago in Yellowstone Park, I, I read the article that this huge fire went through Yellowstone and just burned up everything. And the firefighters were walking through the ashes and kind of looking through things, and it was still smoldering. And they found a little mama bird, and she was laying there, and she was burnt. She was dead, and she was just kind of froze with her you know, laying there, and this guy took his little stick and kind of moved her. Three, three babies running out from under her wings, y'all, alive. And that mama had covered them with her feathers, and those little babies lived. And that's what this is saying he'd do for you. He'll cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. Glory to God. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence, there's that word again, that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, y'all, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Somebody say, I receive that. When you read Psalms 91, y'all, you need to put me in it. Say me instead of you. A thousand shall fall at my side. Ten thousand. Amen. A thousand shall fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, but it will not come near me. That makes it personal, y'all. Somebody said make it personal. Glory to God. You need to say this when you start getting scared. When you start fear, when you feel fear climb up on you, and I've battled fear in my life. You say, any big old thing like you afraid? Oh, yeah. I've been afraid of a lot of things, terrified of certain things. And uh, I've seen some things over the years. And uh, God taught me, you got to face fear. you got to handle it. you got to go deal with it. And you got to speak to it. Fear, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. God didn't give me a spirit of fear. you got to talk to fear. So a thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Somebody say, that's talking to me. I'm not gonna be afraid when thousands start falling at my side. If some kind of, you know, back in the day of the Black Death and when those things, there were people went throughout the country and uh, they would go to the farmhouses in the rural areas and get bodies of these families, y'all. This stuff got in the air and it killed hundreds of thousands of people. And they went into, there was a man, I think it was John Lake, I think that was a minister that went in and would carry these bodies out and help them. You know, it was, it was just awful. It was an epidemic and all these people died. And they couldn't understand why he wasn't getting sick because he wouldn't wear a mask. He just went in and he handled it and he was fine. And he said, it's the law of life in Christ Jesus. This minister told him this. And the Bible says that in Romans. It's the law of life in Christ Jesus. 
The law of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And he's telling them, he said, those germs touch my body because of Jesus, they have to die. And uh, he was one for experiments and stuff too. He liked to prove things. And they asked him, can we do a little test? And he said, yeah. They took some of the foam that come out of these people's mouth that had that deadly germ in it. And they put it on the microscope. And they put it on his finger, y'all. And as soon as it touched his finger, that germ died. And they had scientific proof that's what he believed. Some might say, as your faith is, so be it unto you. So that man had faith. He didn't worry about it. He just didn't, he wasn't concerned about it. There's been a many a times, y'all, that God has had us go into situations where people were very sick, very sick. I've been at the hospital when they insisted that I wear a mask, and I try to do what they tell me, y'all. But, man, they couldn't hear me talk, and I pulled it off and talked to them. Praise God. God has always took care of us when we do things like that, and he watches over us. Somebody give Jesus a big hand if you believe that. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the air that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it won't come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. And this is what the Lord is saying to us. Listen to this. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Somebody say, I received that. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they'll bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. So it says, no plague will come near my dwelling. Mary and I always prayed in the house and we prayed over the house. And I remember years ago, Holly was a baby, and I've told y'all this, she got very sick. And she was sick for days, and she was throwing up, and she couldn't hold no food down. And Bless her heart, she was a little bitty old thing, and she was just sick. And me and Murray felt to bring her to the house. And Tina needed a break, so we went and got Holly with her fever and brought her to the house. And the moment we stepped through the door into our house, she threw up. And I ain't never seen a baby throw up like that in my life. It was... She hurled, y'all. It was, it was horrible. All just blah. And we both went, oh, my gosh. I mean, it was just horrible. I didn't know a kid had that much in them. It was that bad. And uh, she threw up, and we prayed and cried, and we cleaned all that up. And then she started running around the house playing, and her fever went down. And then she said, Mama, I'm hungry. And she hadn't eaten days. She was completely healed, y'all, when she walked in the house. And we understood this scripture that no pestilence would come near our dwelling. When that thing walked through the threshold of our house, it had, and it's not because we're special, but we do believe the word of God. Amen? And we'd spoke life over our house, so Holly needed to come there. And man, she was completely healed from that and uh, never had another problem, started eating, and we were just all thankful. Sometimes, y'all, you got to get people where they need to be. Glory to God. Sometimes you got to get them where they need to be. Sometimes it's a certain place. You got to give them to the church. Uh, there's been a many times I've come to this church and I was so sick. And my fever would leave when I get up here and start singing. And the sickness would leave. And God, God has healed me here many times. And other times I'm like Wanda. I couldn't get to the car. So I stayed at home and rested. So if I can any way get where I need to be, I try to get here. I went to a church in McDowell County years ago and Brother Bobby Stanley was preaching, and I got so sick, but I tried to go, and I just couldn't, I couldn't sit. I had to lay down, and I was running a fever, and I went back in the kitchen, and I laid down on a pew that they had back there in the, where the people eat, and uh, Bobby was in the middle of his service preaching, and God spoke to him, and he come looking for me, and cameras was rolling, and Bobby said, where's Eddie? And they said, Bobby, he's back laying in the pew, said he's real sick. And he's, he's speaking in tongues and I'm praying and he walked back through that kitchen and out, all these people came with him and he brought that microphone back there, man. He knelt down beside of me. I'll never forget it. Glory to God. He laid his forehead against mine right here. I was laying down. I was burning up, y'all. And he laid his forehead against mine. He started praying in the spirit. Powerful, y'all. And that stinking sickness come out of me instantly. I felt my fever break. I started sweating. 
and we laid there and cried and spoke in tongues and praised the Lord. And when I walked out of that church that night, I was completely healed. Somebody say God's a healer. Amen. I need you to know that. I need you to know it. I need you to tell people that. My God is a healer. You need to confess that. When you're praising him and thanking him for paying your electric bill or dealing with situations in your life, handling all that trouble, Lord, I praise you that you're my healer. You need to say that a lot. I praise you that you are my healer. Thank you, Jesus, for those stripes that you took. By your stripes I am healed and I was healed. I praise you that no sickness will come near my dwelling. No plague will come near. No pestilence will come near. I thank you, Lord, that I'm free. A thousand may fall here and 10,000 there, but it won't come near me. I praise you and thank you that your word is truth. And I speak Psalms 91 over all of you and over me. That's how you do it. That's praying the word of God. The Lord told me years ago I was real sick, and he said, I want you to fast while I was sick. I said, all right. And he said, one meal a day. And he said, during that meal, he said, don't pray the problem. Pray the prayer. Pray what God says. Pray what the word says. Don't pray the problem. Don't pray what's going on. Pray the solution. Pray what the word of God says. Pray the promise. That's what it was. Don't pray the problem. Pray the promise. Well, what is the promise? Psalms 91. That's a real good promise. There's all kinds of scripture. He'll cover me with his feathers. Under his wings, I can take refuge. He's my shield and buckler. He's my strong tower. Glory to God, he's my refuge and my fortress. I'll trust him, praise God. He's my healer. No sickness will come near my dwelling. His angels are encamped round about me. That whole, that whole chapter, y'all, is a promise. And the Lord told me to pray the promise. And man, in seven days, I was completely healed and back up on my feet. I was down for weeks. I was down for weeks with a serious back problem, son. My leg go numb and my back locked up and I couldn't come to church because I couldn't sit. I tried to sit, man, and the pain was absolute. I can take some pain, y'all, but it was unbearable. And I couldn't sit. I had to lay flat. And then sometimes I had to lay with my feet hanging off the bed so it bend my back just a certain way. And I finally, man, after seven days, I was able to come back to church. And uh, God healed me. God just put it all back together, man. Everything's good. Somebody say it's all good.